get started, have us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in this year house tonight. And Lord, be with us, and as we hear this word tonight, may it enter our hearts so that we can be the example for others, that when they see us, they will see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's talk is on uh, what he said. This is David's outline, so it's going to be short and sweet. Faith Building 101, God's Word Applied. Ever feel that things were out of control? <laughs> That's a daily occurrence for the yeah. majority yes. of us. Is it ever or otherwise? <laughs> uh, well, not that I know of. <laughs> But that's, that's something that, that pretty much most of us experience every day. Things seem out of control. Uh, we have more control than we can imagine. Maybe not the actual situation, but the way we see things and respond. Instead of listening to every random voice daily and responding accordingly, try listening to what God says, then respond versus react. So... A lot of times we think we're out of control and we might see the situation as hopeless. But with God, ain't nothing hopeless. He can handle anything that comes up and usually does. Now, it won't be necessarily the way we want it handled. It won't be done in the time we want it handled. But it'll be done in the proper manner at the right time. And that's the way he does it. Because regardless of how bad the situation is, it could always be worse. It's like the old man told us one time, he said, he said, cheer up, things could be worse. So we cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. <laughs> so, uh, forgiveness. The grace of God is greater than any mistake I make. The grace of God is greater than any sin I commit. God loves me unconditionally. So, irregardless of what has happened in our past, God will forgive us of it if we ask Him. So, a lot of people will say, well, I can't, I can't be saved because I've got too much in my past. No, uh-uh. God forgives everything in your past. The only thing you not forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And if you're still living, you didn't do it. Because <laughs> if you do that one night, you're going out right now. <coughs> so, as long as you're still alive, you can be forgiven and start over with a clean slate. And that's what a lot of people don't understand and, and don't believe because they've not been exposed to the Christian way. But uh, we have a very, very loving God and a very forgiving God because there's nothing we do, can do, that He can't forgive. Well, you know, it's hard to believe like what Hitler and Stalin done, but yet they could be forgiven and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. If they just accepted Jesus and believed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think Hitler or Stalin either one was studying Jesus. There, <laughs> I don't think that even in their last days they converted over. <laughs> no, but that's, they would have to have done that before they died. Yeah. 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 After you died. die, it's too late. Right. Uh, Hitler was changed, trained as a Jesuit priest. Mm-hmm. He what? He was trained as a Jesuit priest. He sure was. Catholic, Roman Catholic, yeah. Jesuit priest. And he learned how to draw and, uh, and paint. And design Volkswagens. Yeah. <laughs> and I also learned how to kill people. You better believe it. About a million. But uh, even then, had they converted, even in the last day, God would have forgiven them. They'd have had a ticket to heaven. It's just like Billy Graham died this past week. Yeah. Ooh. And uh, he said, don't believe the rumors of my death because all I've done is change my address. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I got something. Um, they, are, they have said, I've heard people say, you know, we got an awesome God. And that you... You can't get to heaven unless you have been baptized in water. So that if you, on your dying, with your dying breath, you accepted the Lord and asked the Lord to forgive you, 
then you can't go to heaven because you hadn't been baptized. If you can, that's according to what some people say. That's right. what people but say. Now, who's in charge of it? People or God? God. Now, okay, what did God say? He you said Jesus Christ and you go to heaven. That's what God says. He didn't say nothing about having to, having to be baptized. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward faith. Exactly. Because I was in a church and I was listening to that and I won't say the name of this church but at the end they said has anybody got any questions? Well, you know me. That was sitting <laughs> on my mind. And I thought, how precious is our God? How precious is Jesus? You know, if you, you asked him and you really mean it, he's not going to turn away. That's right. And I asked. Okay, what you're doing. And I said... You mean to tell me that on a person's, with a person's dying breath, and they really mean it with all their heart, you're, t you're telling me that they, they, that they can't make it to heaven? You're confusing religion and faith. Uh -huh. Religion mm -hmm. is man-made. We come up with all this stuff. I was at a church one time where they, at the front of the, the uh, where we've got that table, that was the no-no. You had to have an altar or the church was not, not done right. It had to be an altar. Wait a minute. God really don't give a flip where you pray. All he worries about is whether or not you pray. That's the important thing. Not where, not how it's dressed up, not whether women wear these hats on there or the men wear them little bitty things to cover that ball spot or whatever. That's man-made. That ain't the important stuff. The important stuff is worshiping God. The important stuff is accepting dress, Jesus. Yeah, how you dress makes no difference at all. You can be, you can pray just as hard and just as, as meaningfully with a pair of bib coveralls on as you can a three-piece suit. Right. So that's man-made stuff. And I know churches where if you don't wear a coat and tie, they don't want you to come in. Right. And churches where if you hoot and holler, they don't want you to come in. If I'd go back to the church I grew up in right now, they'd probably ask me to leave. Because you didn't hoot and holler in that church. Mm -hmm. You sat down with your mouth shut, and you had a program, told you when to stand up, when to sit down, and when you could sing. I mean, they won't like it is here. Here we hoot and holler, and if you wanted to get up in the aisle and dance or whatever, fine. I've seen everything but jumping pews. I ain't seen that yet, but I ain't ruled it out. One day that'll happen too. Yeah. I went back to my first, my <coughs> church for the first time in a long time, a few years ago. Uh -huh. And they started singing, and I started, me and my sister started clapping, and the next thing I knew, I looked around, and Everybody looking at <laughs> nobody was clapping, nobody was, you know. Looking at you and like they you were, walked And these were people I'd known since I was little, mm -hmm. you know. And they were looking at me like. <laughs> yeah. Like you crazy woman. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's man made. That's religion. Yep. That's religion. It, it, it ain't it ain't God induced. That's man made. Or the rocks will cry out. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I don't believe that they don't know the Lord. It's just that they never have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost to to, to that's right. want them to dance or clap or Feel whatever. Good. Uh -huh. Or maybe some of them do. I remember when I was in that church. And this lady had been teaching Sunday school for years in this. And her she her and her husband went with my mom and daddy over to hear I forget his name, it's in North Pat Robertson. Mm -hmm. Went to hear Pat Robertson. And you talk about a woman coming back different. She come and she went around to every Sunday school class after that. And she says, I've been coming to this church for so many years, sitting so many in a certain pew and watching my clock. And if it wasn't finished by 12 o'clock, I was looking at the pastor and saying, what's going on? Uh -huh. Wore my fancy hat, oh, my yeah. clothes. And she says, I did not know who Jesus was. That's right. She said, I only thought I did. Uh -huh. 
And she said, never but seen I got saved the Holy Ghost. and received the Holy Ghost. And she says, I'm a changed woman now, and you're going to hear it. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. You're not going to be the same. He's going to make a big difference in you. He's going to give you a boldness that you even, you wouldn't believe. She was never the same person again. Because I know she didn't that, sit in that church like that When David and I first started the prison ministry, <coughs> we got in that, in that first first room we went in and that gate clunked Close. behind us. That will give you a funny feeling. <laughs> but uh, the Holy Ghost was working on us real hard. Mm. And we went into this one room and there was one fella in there that was about the size of that door. Any way you want to measure it, he was the size of that door. And I did my little speech on uh, Paul. And I said, you think you tough? You think you mean? You ain't nothing. You just a wuss. And that fella's eyes started getting a little big. David started getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him about it sometime. But by the time it was over, because I like to talk about how God can use the big boys of the Bible and who they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think, yeah, they, they are outstanding. They do never nothing wrong. They're perfect, right? No, they're the biggest screw-ups you ever heard about. They're worse than any of us. Even Moses, David, you name any of them. They're worse than any of us. But still God was able to use them in a mighty manner. If he can use them, he can use us. And he will. All you have to do is say, I'm available. And he'll use you. But don't say it if you don't mean it. Because he, he got a job for you there. And it ain't going to be the job you wanted to do. But it's going to be the job he needed done. And you know what, Benny? When you said that to that guy, you, 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 you only did it because you knew well, you had the power of God. I had the Holy Ghost. In yes, I didn't have no fear and you of had best. <laughs> you you had best. <laughs> if they had jumped in, jumped us in that prison because it was two doors, mm -hmm. we'd have been a, a, a pile of mush. Time the guards got in there, but we had the Holy Ghost with us, and He protected us. And I have dealt with such. Uh huh. I mean, the Holy Ghost will be is always with you, and at times He will protect you. I had That's a right. car wreck. I wrecked my truck. And Holy Ghost put his arms around me, put his hands Amen. around me, mm -hmm. and encompassed me in his hands mm -hmm. and kept me safe. And all I got out of it was a sore neck. Towed the truck, but all I got was a sore neck. Mm -hmm. And you knew I mean, that you there. knew. <laughs> well, I felt him right before right mm -hmm. before I had that covert. I felt him. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. But just, just like with your prison ministry, the first time you went in there, you had a real funny feeling. I didn't have a funny feeling because I was used to going to visit my nephew in prison. Uh -huh. He was in prison for 20 years, and I was used to going. So I, the first time I went to visit him, though, I had that funny feeling. Yeah. And we were sitting in that big room with all these prisoners and all their visitors, mm -hmm. and you didn't know whether you were supposed to speak or not. And they weren't allowed to go, but so close to the machines to tell you what they wanted, you know, uh -huh. for you to buy them. And it was just... Right. You didn't. You felt weird. It's an unnerving experience. <laughs> and you had. Sure. You didn't have just one gate. You went through. You had about four. <laughs> yeah. Doors that closed behind you. Each time you stepped through one, it slammed. You stepped through another one, it slammed. So. So when I went to prison ministry, I was used to it because I've been used to going to visit him. But the first time you go in there, it will get your attention because you ain't sure what's coming up. But if they get out half as much out of it as we do, they were truly blessed. Mm -hmm. I think it, it will bless you. I go in there with such feeling such joy uh -huh. and happiness, and I live there feeling leave there feeling even more. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so just like not last last month. When we went to prison ministry, we went, we went for the short termers, which is called CRB, and none of them came. Not any of them. Well, some of them had been some of the uh, general population had been in there singing and practicing for their Sunday morning services. So when nobody came from CRB, which they had moved a lot of them, nobody came down to have for the meeting. So they wouldn't let us announce 
general population. There was 58 of them just, just like that that come in mm -hmm. there for, and they, you know, they were so happy that they were going to get two meetings last month, yeah. you know, instead of one. And it was, you know, it, it's, you don't just help them, you come out different. The more you give away the joy, the more you'll have. And that, that's hard to understand in, in modern concept. But the more you give away, the more you end up there. You can't explain how what it makes you how it no. makes you feel. Unless you've you're sitting witnessing to somebody and trying to get them to accept the Lord as their savior. Your savior. Yeah. And your savior. You, you can't. But you come out totally totally different than you went in. It, it's amazing. Oh, you coming out here with Miss Stacy was coming. Miss Arthur's sister. Uh, little short lady. I think so. She would, the spirit would hit her, and she'd dance from the front of the church to That's the back. Right. Yeah. And get up there in the corner, they'd turn around here, and she'd go right there. <laughs> you talking about... And when left her, wherever she was at, she'd uh -huh. sit down. Yeah. You talking yeah. about Freeman's mama? Huh. Are you talking about mm. Freeman's mama? No. Miss no. Daisy. Uh, oh, Miss, Miss Daisy. Uh, oh, yeah. Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy's yeah. sister. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now that uh, Framer's mama would, would she, jump up in the aisle and dance around a lot. Mama Tiny. So she got yeah. to where she could. Yeah, Sister Tiny. But she'd shout then. And we had <laughs> one fellow that would run around the church. I, he, I don't remember now who remember, that was. Do you remember when Bertie and Clinton was here? And Bertie and I used we used to get up and run yeah. around the church and stuff. Yeah. You know. When we'd do that marching song, uh -huh. we'd get up and march around the church. Well, that, we've had people just get up and run around church during the service. I mean, the Holy yeah. Ghost moves you, you're going to do something. Whatever he tells you, you're going to do it. I had the laughing spirit one time. Uh huh. People just couldn't stop laughing. Do you remember that, Miss Mary? Laughing spirit. Mm. But it's, it's just the way that God moves in you. And a lot of churches you go to, and this is the man made religion stuff, Kitty. He, they frown upon that. But if it's edifying God, then that's what He wants you to do. And when we jump up and, and dance in the in in the uh, hall and the walkway and so forth, it's because the Holy Ghost told us to do that. That's it's right. just like when people speak in tongues. You got a lot of churches. Well, man, uh -uh, you don't do that here. <laughs> but that's the way the Bible says do it. So you speak in tongues, and then somebody be there to interpret it. Uh, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, as somebody informed me, Frankie, <laughs> you go speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Period. It's coming out. You yeah. can't hold it back. But uh, that's God. That's the way God works in you. Now, man says, don't do that in this church. That's wrong. <clears throat> don't do it. We don't do that kind of stuff. Next thing you know, you're going to be handling snakes. No, I ain't. <laughs> it, it says that if they bite me, they won't hurt me. Don't tell me I got to pick them up and entice them to uh, bite me. Do not tempt the Lord thy God. That's right. yeah. <laughs> but by the same token, I've spent yeah. many an hour in slimy green swamps that were heavily laden with water moxins. I ain't never been bit because the whole time I'm in wading in that waist deep swamp, I'm thinking about. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. You said he can't hurt me. I'm holding you to it. That's right. I say that the whole time I'm in there. That's right. Until I come out the other side. Mm -hmm. Or the boat comes against us, whichever. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about how God forgives us for everything we do, how we mess up. And no matter how many times I mess up, no matter how many That's mistakes I make, he will forgive me because he loves me. His love is reaching out to me always. So, there again, look, we're human. We're going to mess it up royally to the point sometimes you can't even recognize what it was. We've messed it up so bad. And then he says, all right, let me tell you how to straighten it out. Do this, this, and this, and everything will be all right, and I forgive you and I love you. And if you do what he says, everything will turn out all right. Of course, most of the time we don't, and we mess it up even worse, but right. 
He still loves us. He, yeah, I'm sure he gets up there and he shakes his head a lot, especially when he looks at some of the junk I do. He'll shake his head and say, boy, how many times have I got to tell you? I'm going to tell you one more time. We'll see if it works this time. <coughs> and then we'll go through the whole thing again. But it, he always forgives if you ask. But you have to ask. That's the key. The forgiveness is there. It's waiting. You have to ask. That way he knows you're ready for it. And he'll give it to you. One-time thing. Yep. Yeah. And here's the big one. He forgives and forgets all my sins. Therefore, I forgive myself. I must not condemn myself or beat myself up. He never condemns me, shuts me out, or turns himself from me. As soon as I ask for forgiveness, he is just and forgives me my sins, purifies me of all unrighteousness. <clears throat> That's one thing we have problems with. Forgiving ourselves. God forgive us. Mm -hmm. But how many times have you said or you heard somebody else say, well, ten years ago I did this and I, I, I just can't forgive myself for it. Or you'll see their actions creating that. Well, you're going to make mistakes in this life. That's how you learn. You do things wrong. You touch that hot stove, and that's how you learn. No, I don't touch that no more. It's hot. <laughs> <coughs> it's the same way with, in everything we do. We learn that this is wrong, don't do it. And as we go, we have to forgive ourselves for mistakes we make because we know that God's going to forgive us once we ask Him to. Some of the mistakes <coughs> we have made, I know it's the Holy Ghost that's our conscience. Told us not to do it, mm -hmm. but we still done it. Did it anyway. Oh yeah. And I, I do remember all. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of times. Yeah. Remember that a bunch of times. <laughs> Boy, don't do that. I'm gonna do it anyway. This one about the rescue mm -hmm. used to be the mean little kid. If I do it, I'm gonna get a whooping. I'm gonna get a whooping anyway. <laughs> and that word bad association leads to. Oh yeah. You're going to be like the people you hang around with. Yep. You hang around with good folks, you're going to be good. You hang around with bad folks, you're going to be bad. Amen. That's when you're conscious. And I hang around any. We're afraid. We're going to have a pray for you. Oh, Lord. Right, oh, Lord. <laughs> we just had a pray for you. <coughs> but, uh, you. A lot of times you're out when I know when I go out and I'm looking for somebody, the biggest fear we have is missing something. Missing a clue that's out there that we didn't see. That would have led us to find that subject a lot quicker. Do you find them alive more than you do it don't? It goes in spells. Uh, the last two children were, were found dead. Uh, we run about 75% life finds, so that makes it worthwhile. You, you find several dead ones, and then you go out and you find a two-year-old that's alive. It makes it all worthwhile. Because then you know your efforts led to finding that child and finding them alive. Children aren't supposed to die. Old folks, yeah, they die. Children, are, they're, they're supposed to live a long life and before they die. So they're hard to take. You did something good, though, even though you, you, it hurts you that they didn't live. Right. And you found them dead. But you gave them closure for their parents. For the family, you, we give closure. You gave them closure. That's very important. Uh, we don't always find them. But when we do, we have closure. That's, that's very important. And <coughs> the last one we found was a, a four-year-old. And he had a very crappy home life. There was eight children, four of them in school, four of them preschool. The father was in prison waiting deportation. <coughs> the mother had just got out of jail. Granddaddy was having to take care of the young ones. Oh my goodness. This kid would uh, run around barefooted yeah, all year long. Didn't matter what temperature or nothing was, he was barefooted. Go out in the woods, build shelters out there, 
stay out there, been known to stay out overnight. I mean, he was a four-year-old Rambo. The only problem was he didn't swim good. He fell in the pond and drowned. And we searched the area real good, and the only thing, only clues we found were the footprints right around that pond. So that told us where he was, but we had to eliminate the other areas until they got through. They had to go to court to get the pond drained. And once they did, they found him. There's nothing we could have done that would have made any difference, but the, what we did gave the family closure because our effort showed that he's got to be there because there's no sign of him being anywhere else. Okay? Mm. That's the way that one is. It has to be better than these people that never find out what happened to their... Yeah, we had a five-year-old in uh, Sampson County we never found. Had a lot of rumors floating around about what happened to him and so forth, but we never found him. So, one of the rumors was he was using a satanic ritual. Whether that was true or not, I don't know. But, what'd you find make it worthwhile? Just like here, did I miss something? It's just like, did I forget to ask God for forgiveness? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's your biggest fear. And you know you messed up, but you're ashamed of what you did, and you don't ask for forgiveness. And if you don't ask, you don't get. Just like when I'm, I'm teaching the class, and they're, they're getting ready to run their overnight exercise, I said, now you can ask for anything you want. Don't mean you'll get it, but I promise you one thing, if you don't ask for it, you won't get it. <laughs> and, you know, that was uh, anything from a dog to a helicopter. If you want it, ask for it. I'll say yay or nay. Most times it's nay, but if they don't ask, it's always nay. They don't get it. Just like forgiveness, you have to ask for it in order to, to get it. God is quick to renew my heart and supports me with his unfailing love. I will not let guilt or condemnation weigh heavy on my spirit. Now that is where a lot of us have problems. We let that, that guilt weigh on us real heavy instead of, of letting God renew our hearts. Now he's, he's really ready to do that if we let him. But there again, we have to let him. He's given us free choice. We have to let him. <coughs> it's just like, to me, if you're a Christian, and I'll use homosexuals, if that's their choice to live that lifestyle. And if you're a Christian, you have to respect that choice. You don't have to agree with what they do. You don't have to support what they do, but you have to accept that's their choice. And what does God tell us? Love the sinner, hate the sin. That's what we have to do too. And this is in, in, in all aspects, not just that one example, but in everything. Just like somebody mentioned earlier, a mass murderer. Can he uh, get forgiveness? Anybody in here read the, the book, The Shack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That man murdered several children. Several children. Did you watch the uh, video? Yeah. Was it like the book? Very close. Very close. Because in the I end, read the, I haven't seen the, haven't it, seen the video. It didn't the show video. the man being uh, forgiven for his crimes. But it, everything else was pretty darn close to what the book had. <coughs> but in the book, I had to keep going back. one of the daddies of the men whose child, whose daughter was murdered by this guy, uh, of course, his initial thoughts was he hated him, he wanted him to hang, and, and he'd shoot him himself if he could get the opportunity, etc., etc. But in the end, he went to the man and told him about God and told him about Jesus. And brought him to the Lord. And brought him to accept Jesus. Now that takes a Christian. 
That takes somebody with a, with a Christian heart. A strong Christian <coughs> Very. And it took him a while to get to that point. But it was only after his visit with God. Uh, for those of y'all who hadn't read the book or seen, seen the, the movie, this man had an experience where he came up to this shack where his daughter was, was taken and murdered. And all of a sudden, the shack was transformed into something that was very livable. And in there was the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, the Father was a big black, big black, black, uh, big black woman. The Holy Ghost was a frail girl. Jesus was a average looking guy in his 30s. Nothing real special about his looks or anything else. But they led this fella to accept the fact that his daughter was in a better place and to deal with her death. Because there's nothing harder than, than having to deal with the death of a child. If there is, I don't want nothing to do with it. Uh, they're supposed to bury you. You're not supposed to bury them. <coughs> but he gets over this by the, the, lead, the leadership that he received while he was there. And what took a, what was it, a week that he was there? Something like a week, three, three days to a week that he was there was actually momentarily. But I ain't never forgot. I mean, he won't stop time. He does. Ain't no big deal. But if you get the chance, get the book and read it. That will teach you the relationship that you have between the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And always remember, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost can pretty much take any form they so desire. That's, I think, when I first read the book, I was having a hard time picturing people. And so I would go back and go back and go back time and time and time again to get in my head what this was representing. Mm -hmm. Because in the book, it doesn't... And it just took me a long time to finally get it in my head who everybody was. Uh -huh. And <coughs> so then, by the time I got to the end of the book, I really liked it. Yeah. It was very moving. Yeah. I saw a part of the movie, but I hadn't, didn't see all of it. But I think, I think the movie, a lot of people I've heard that they liked the book so much they didn't want to go see the movie because they didn't want anything. The movie doesn't usually, it is usually as good as the book. Mm -hmm. I think to me, it would, it would, I would understand it better. Yeah, it reinforces the, some things. Yeah, I think. I because think you, you see it instead of just read it. The only thing was the movie stopped a little short of the book. Oh, it did? It didn't go into how he led this man to Christ. Oh, um, I wonder why. I don't know. Hmm. I would have thought that it had that in there, yeah. but they didn't. I didn't watch but a little bit of the movie. So yeah, come them running, finish it. Jesus and, and uh, the man running across the pond. <laughs> but the book was great. The book was outstanding. It really was. But that... That teaches you the relationship between right. us, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and how it all intermingles. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and how you look at each one. It was like the, the fellow one time, the Holy Ghost said, I'm, I'm going to come to your house tonight. Uh -huh. And so he prepared a meal and stuff, and he was he was sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. The doorbell rang, he <laughs> ran to the doorbell, and it was somebody that was hungry. Hmm. So he brought him in, and he fed him. And then they left. And he waited and waited, and the doorbell rang again. He'd run to the door. The fella come in. It was cold outside. He had no coat. So he brought him in, gave him some, some stuff to warm him up, some food and drink to warm him up, and gave him a coat. The guy went on his way. And then another person, the doorbell rang again, and it was somebody that just needed somebody to, to help them through the situation they were in. So he talked to them and so forth, and... and and did the best he could to help him get through that situation. 
and they left. And he looked at his watch, and it was almost 12 o'clock. He said, Holy Ghost, you told me you were coming tonight, and I was ready. But you've not come. He said, why? And the Holy Ghost told him, he said, look, I came. I was there three times. First time, you fed me when I was hungry. You clothed me when I needed clothes. You gave me support when I needed love. So I was there. So whatever we do for anybody, we're doing for him. And you know, people this day and time, they should do it. But there's an awful lot of mean people in this world. Oh, yeah. But they, mean people get into heaven, too. I know it. Yeah. But yeah. you know something that you've heard people say? The good die young, the mean live a long time. Yeah. And if you stop and think, you can see it in the area that you live in. Uh-huh. And I mean, it is true. Well, that's delaying your interest in heaven. Right. So that you're delaying getting <coughs> the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like you, you've heard that when you get to heaven, you're going to have everybody come to you that you had an influence on in the life here, right? Right. Well, Billy Graham's going to have quite a crowd that come to him. He'll have millions. <laughs> what about the guy that saved Billy, showed Billy Graham how to be saved? Yeah. You reckon he's going to have a few people there? <laughs> <laughs> so what we do here lives on long after we're gone. That's why that's not going to happen until after Jesus comes back. Because the effect is still going on every day that we have on the on, while we're here on this earth. What was someone said that old Billy Graham said he just changed address? Yep, just changed his address. <laughs> he won't be in, just changed his address. That's right. Just you know, he didn't even quit breathe, breathing, but you know, well, he didn't quit breathing. breathing. Truly He's still breathing. Though. He's just breathing different air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was truly a man of God. He was. Yeah. News media is trying their best to destroy him. Mm -hmm. But then that's the news media. And that's my personal opinion. I ain't nothing biblical about it, but you can't believe nothing those idiots what say. What did Donald Trump call the news? Fake news. <laughs> I can't imagine how anybody, I don't care what, what party you're in, what, how anybody could ever find anything to criticize that man about. I just, I mean, he was, I really can't. Oh, he was stayed away from his family so much. He was gone so much. This, that, and the other. And he won't go on any more than, than a, a military person was. Mm -hmm. Or he is. Because when you're serving the country, you, you'd be gone for a year. Look at his kids. Family mind. Yeah. He was an influence to his own kids. Well, his kids a got in trouble. Of, a lot of people. Well, what did he do? A lot of youngins get in trouble. One was on drugs and one did something. I forget what it was. But that happens even in the best of families. That happens. <laughs> yep. Kids are kids. Mine, my three boys were holy terrors. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I might explain to you some of the things they did, but not all of them. <laughs> so yours couldn't walk on water neither? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they had trouble staying in the boat. <laughs> <clears throat> no, they did about everything wrong that they could. They tried my patience to the limit. I used to threaten to sue Dr. Pugh for malpractice because he told me I would live through these children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I told him I was going to hold him to that. <laughs> well... And he was right, I finally did. Took a while, but I finally did. Well, I thank God for listening to they They didn't really, or I don't know of anything really horrible. They, they didn't right. really put me through a whole lot. It was... Mine took up their slack. Well, I think Elwood took them. Uh, he worried me to death. You know? uh -huh. Maybe it was... I'm not saying Lisa and Gil were perfect, but they didn't. You never had to go to the police station to get them out? Never. <laughs> yes. yeah. They might not have done everything they should have, 
but they, they, she died and found out two weeks later somehow that my kids did something. <laughs> well, and they <laughs> kept it a secret. <laughs> you were lucky in some days. Okay, the Lord restores, restores my soul, renews my heart. In Him, I have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Jesus took my sin so that I might become righteous. I am made righteous and clean. I am accepted, loved, and appreciated by the Lord. My heart is free from the burden of guilt and shame. The joy and peace of God fill my heart and make me new. So, here again, he, he takes us when we're beat down and we think we're at the end of our rope and he will restore us and he'll give us the fortitude to keep going. The difference is in a winner and a loser. Winner gets up and one more time he gets knocked down. And that's really the only difference. Because life's going to beat you down. But if you got God on your side, I don't care how many are against you, you got them outnumbered. And you're going to win. And regardless of, of how man thinks it turned out, you're going to win. So in the scriptures, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1, 9. And in Acts 13, 38, Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus the forgiveness of sin is Proclaim to you. And in Ephesians 1 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the riches, riches of God's grace. So, with his grace, we're going to become everything this world's got. But without his grace, you ain't going to make it. Just like we were talking about earlier about the, the death of a child. I know when my son died, my oldest son. Mm. I was devastated. Mm. And Annie Norman mm. came over and stayed with me. And she taught me how to find God's peace. And I ended up, started by 8 o'clock that morning, praying, constant prayer. Prayed all day till about 6 o'clock that night when God answered me. And Jesus himself told me, ask not about your son, for he is with me. And then the Holy Ghost got on there and he told me a, a bunch of things that would happen. And exactly what he said happened. Exactly the way he said mm -hmm. it happened. And I was able to have his peace. That don't mean pain's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, pain's still there. But you have his peace about it. Mm -hmm. So instead of being in a raging storm, where the waters are higher than the boat, the waters are like this tabletop, they're flat. So, His peace will carry you through any situation that you run into. But you have to ask for it. And you have to wait on Him to bring it at the right time. Anybody got anything they want to add? I think you've done an excellent job. Well, I did good. Really David. good. David. And he interrupted your plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to that, especially from you. <laughs> well, what do you think I'm for? If you didn't, look, if you didn't interrupt me, I swear you didn't love me no more. <laughs> That's why God put me here. To That's help. right. <laughs> That's right. Help drive you to crazy. To teach me restraint. <laughs> Lessons. <laughs> and you're doing a good job of it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, if nobody's got anything else, we'll close it. Eddie, can you give us a closing prayer? Right. Heavenly Father, help us to understand what you said is what counts. You said we are forgiven. Help us to walk in that forgiveness. And help us to forgive ourselves. Help us to walk in your light in everything we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.